Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be going a bit further on the battery charging videos and I'm hoping to get a, this box filled up with batteries again and put in my oops and hopefully I will have a running oops hopefully so what do we have on the bench or on the table here I have 10 batteries charging and they're performing really good right now they're actually I just turned this up so they're getting a full amp they are sharing a full amp right now so apparently they're taking a good charge I do remember this one out here being a bit bad so we're gonna have a look at that and see if that has improved any check the multimeter over here so that you can watch it that's better and I'll disconnect and let's measure the voltage of the battery bank it should be good only 12.0 it's not bad. Let's unwrap this. And I'll just measure this and you can see. They're not doing bad at all. Let's do the lab test. Some of them are not that good. This one is not very good. This is good, this is okay, good, 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 not very good, not very good. The end one out here is not that bad. Okay. I'll move this chain over on the, on the car charger to give it some more charge and over here I already have the chain from last week working on the car charger. I just plugged it in here not long ago and at that time it was taking in 2 amps and right now it's down to about about a half an amp. So these are not that bad. I'm gonna move those out of there again and put the 10 batteries in there instead. 10 batteries has moved over here and they're taking in a good charge just about 2 amps up there very nice so I think most of these will be okay which is really great I might check them and see if there's like one there that is bad and instead use one of these take the best one of well, I might just take the best one of all the batteries we'll see it's probably gonna take a little bit to charge these up. 10 batteries sharing two amps. Well, that takes a while. Up here, my stash of dead batteries is gone. And that's because I've traded them in. I exchanged the dead batteries with these batteries. And these are not new, they're also old, rather bad batteries that has been taken out of cars because they weren't good enough. I got these instead and they're probably a lot better than the one I traded with so that's kind of a win but um, well they're heavy so I'm gonna be carrying them down into the basement we might as well start with the heaviest one while I'm fresh the four batteries has magically moved down to the basement uh, not magically enough so that I didn't get a workout of it but now they are down here I have to move some of the other batteries away I want a couple of here to be charging on those so I need to move some more around but I want to check the water in these first I deliberately got some with water in them because one with the caps on them they are a bit harder to maintain when they're not really meant for maintaining I prefer the one with the distilled water and I, I 
went and bought some distilled water so to top them off if there is anything missing. Let's just start with a voltage reading on the batteries. First one, 11.3. Second one, 12.3. Third one, 12.1. Four, 12.2. The voltage reading really don't says much about the, how good the battery is. We can just take the take the lamp here and see if if it will light up the lamp. And this is not good. This is good. This is good. And this is not bad. So this first one was the worst one. So I'm gonna start. Checking that one out, see if there is the necessary water. It would be a shame if this was a dead one because it's a nice 74 amp hour battery. And it's the second largest, I think. Yeah, the second largest of the ones I got. Yeah, it doesn't look that bad. There is probably a little bit missing over here. It's not like there is a lot missing, so I have my syringe here and I've put in some distilled water and I'm just gonna put in 10 milliliters in each. Okay, just gonna clean it a little bit. I like them to look good too. Over on the shell with that. And it's charging with a couple of amps. It's a bit hard to see when it's in there. It's, it's charging with about three amps here. It's not that bad. I'm gonna get rid of that one too. This is the biggest of the batteries I got. And so this is probably the one that I want the most to have working for me. It's also the one that turned out worse when I tried it with this battery tester, battery analyzer. Let's just see that result. Here it is. It, it says that it is 12 volts, but it's only able to do 44 cold cranking amps and there's an internal resistance of 56.26 milliohms, which is a lot. You need something below 10 10 milliohms to just start a car. Let's check the fluids in this one. Check the fluids and there's nothing missing. It's not like they're dry or anything. In this battery there is even a little meter down there. There's a little plastic tab. Can we see that? Over on my side of it. Sometimes it's visible. That's where the water should be. Acid. It's not bad so just gonna try and charge it. More or less the only thing I can do. I'm gonna, gonna borrow some wires from over here and put over there. Put a diesel fader on that one or just to help get the voltage up. Took it down here again. I need some battery clamps to be able to put some voltage on it. So I have some very nice Chinese branded ones here that I'm gonna be putting on. And if you don't know, the size of the plus and the minus terminal is actually not alike. This one is for the minus, it does not go on there, it goes on over there. And this one is for the plus, and that fits there snugly. So I'll be finding a good hammer and just giving him just enough so they go down. I have one of these things and it does actually not go down on the plus terminal, but it does go around the minus terminal. So I use that to gently put this in place and put it over here. So I'll just tap it down. If I don't get this battery fixed, I will just take these off again. It's not a big deal, but I need them on right now because um, I wanted to use these cables to, to put power over to this battery. 
and they cannot be put about the big terminal but they can go around this one that's why I had to carry it all the way down here again back on the shelf the meter is here and I'm hoping that we can see that yeah it does take some chunks well it's not that good two big batteries that was not doing very well is only using about 3 amps that's not a lot and the bank of tin down here they're using about 2 amps just about 2 amps okay in the basement these guys has been charging for about a day now they're still taking about 2 amps and they have not really fallen any well, I don't know if that's a good thing or if it's a bad thing if some of them are not that good this one has been charging, or these two has been charging. They started out by drawing about 3 amps and now they're down to next to nothing. Put the diesel fader, this Chinese thing that is very doubtful, and a homemade one that uh, seems to be working better, at least when you look at an oscilloscope. Over here on the table, I have I've charged this a little bit and I've charged this a little bit. This has been sitting overnight, so that's probably got the best charge of the two. It's good, it wanna take an amp. This power supply is only able to, to deliver one amp. It's not much of a charge, it's just a little bit to get it up. So I'm gonna be disconnecting something and see how it's really doing. This one is, uh, well, I don't know, in the middle somewhere. It's, it's not very high voltage, 12.15, and it's able to do 375 cold cranking amps, and it has an internal resistance of 6.46. Uh, it's not that great. Let's try the other one. Uh, this one is doing about the same. 12.5 volts, 300 cold cranking amps, and an internal resistance of 9 milliohms. Uh, the big one, I just took it off the charger, so it's reading 13.3 volts, 537 cold cranking amps, and an internal resistance of 5.23. So let's try the other one. Thirteen point zero five, three hundred and thirty-seven cold cranking amps, and the internal resistance of eight milliohms. So there's none of them is doing really great right now. I have moved a bit around on the batteries, and I'm just gonna give them something to do. I'm gonna take this. I think it's a fifty-five watt ball that is in here. Drain the batteries just a little bit to get the top load off. And measure them again. Same thing. This one became a lot better just taking the top of it. It actually went down to 13.05 volts and 600 and 56 cold cranking amps and an internal resistance of 4.48. I don't think this is that bad. It's probably okay. And I put the other two batteries over here. They're now charging on that one. They're pulling about 4 amps right now. And I'm gonna take these off. Take them to the table and let's see which, if any of these are good. Just gonna measure the voltage really quick. 12.6. 12 .3, 12.7, 12.7, 12.8, 12.6, 12.7, 12.7, 12.7, 12.6, 12.7, 12.7, 12.7, they're, they're all pretty good. I did really not expect that. All these batteries have turned out rather well. They're not really that bad anymore. So I'm gonna be trying to put those back in my... Uh, oops, time has run out. I can already see that this film is gonna be one of those 
long ones while editing. So do leave a comment below if you've got something to add. I just want to say hi, I enjoy reading all the messages. I might leave a shorter answer because I do get a lot of messages nowadays. And read all the other guys' comments. Brilliant guys are writing down there, including you. Thank you for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you.